In this video I'm showing you a simple workaround to create a snap-on smile using the partial framework module. For this I'm selecting the work type anatomic pontic for all but one of the teeth where I want to create a snap-on smile. I also activate the connectors for all of them. For the last tooth I select the partial framework work type. This makes it easier for the software to understand what's going on. I also activate the virtual articulator in this case. Now I can go directly to the design. The reason why I selected only anatomic pontics will be apparent later on in the partial framework software. In the first step I'm directly starting the virtual articulator. Using the parameter opening of byte I can set up a gap between the upper and lower jaw. Then I just start the virtual articulator. The movements of the virtual articulator get applied. This is not only used to open the bite, but also because it gives me the option to dynamically adapt the occlusion to the antagonist in a later step. You can see that now there is a gap present between the upper and lower jaw. The next step would be the smile creator. Obviously it is possible to use the smile creator in this case as well, but I am refraining from that here. In the tooth setup you can select a library that fits your situation at hand. In this case I am selecting the HD library. Clicking on both of the distal contact points for your tooth arch you set up all of your teeth. You realize that the tooth 1.7 is present as well which was selected as a partial framework tooth. In this step you can correct the positions of the whole tooth arch. I recommend for a work like this to use the chain mode. As always I'll start off with correcting the position of the last molars and locking the discs. I always recommend locking the discs instead of the last molars because now the endpoints of the arch are locked but the molars themselves are variable in size and direction. Now you can move around the anteriors and you see the whole arch deforming and adapting. I normally start off with the canines first. Once you lock the canines into place, you can adapt the incisors and the premolars as well. Once you are happy with the setup of your teeth, you can just go next. This would also be the perfect moment to switch to expert mode and start the smile creator if you wanted to. In the freeform step, you can adapt the cervical areas of your anatomical shapes. I recommend modeling the anatomical shapes in a way that they completely enclose the natural teeth. This not only helps retaining the minimum thickness, but also gives them a more natural look. It also helps to pay attention that the anatomical shapes don't overlap the gingiva, so this will not be cut off later on and create hurtful edges for the patient. When you're done with your freeforming, it is time to switch to the adapt tab to adapt the occlusion. In this step you should only adapt the occlusion and ignore the pontics or approximal contact points. You can select between the static and the dynamic adaption, but don't press cut all intersections. Since the pontics are still intersecting the natural teeth, any other adaption would hurt the design, but we will adapt this later on in the partial framework software. For now just click next. The thickness and shape of the connectors is not important in this case, so we select the tooth to tooth adaption and just adapt them. This is only giving us one complete object, it's not important for the stability for now. So we are just going to click next again. We are done with our design and the whole object gets merged. For now the software will close down and we will get back to the dental DB. Once back in the dental DB I'm clicking on design partial to start the partial framework software. For the survey model I am deactivating the blockout undercuts. You can alternatively select a negative draft angle as well. Now I am clicking next until I reach the step fill in wax clone tool. In this step I can do several things to improve the design and achieve exactly what I want. First off I am going to select a thickness which correlates to the desired minimum thickness of the material I am using. In this case for demonstration I draw a finish line around all of my teeth. This gives me a set minimum thickness in the areas where the snap on effect comes into play. Based on the material you are using, your production methods and the strength of your undercuts this might not even be a necessary step for you. 
On the other hand, this guarantees you a set minimum thickness around all of those areas where you're drawing your material. You can also use this tool to apply some connectors between the teeth. Even though we set up connectors in an earlier step in the dental cat, those might not follow the tooth shape and these ones will do. For this, I just draw on the approximal contact points on all of the teeth. If you have areas where you fear the minimum thickness might not be reached, you can use this tool to draw on the teeth to set it up. You can see here the difference between the anatomic shape I set up in the dental cat and the green wax I'm drawing right now. You can also obviously add material to the occlusal area to guarantee your minimum thickness there, but this way you lose the dynamic adaption of your virtual articulator, so I don't recommend doing that. Once you've added material everywhere you want, you just can click next until you reach the step add part. Here you can finally add your anatomic setup. For this I'm selecting the objects and switching them to editable. Since we have one partial pontic and one bridge, you only have to switch up two of the objects. Just click convert to wax and you're done. If you would have selected partial pontics for all of the teeth in the dental DB, this would also work, but you would have to switch all of them separately to an editable object. In the edit wax step, you can smooth out all of the edges in the transitions between the minimum thickness and the anatomical shapes. Obviously it pays off to still pay attention to the anatomic shapes for the interiors as to not to destroy the shape you set up in your dental cat. I also like to smooth the area in the approximal contact points a little bit. This helps for the production when you're printing this whole piece. If you're milling it, this will not make a difference. In the areas where the dynamic occlusion left holes in your design, I recommend smoothing the edges of those holes, using the height blockout in refractory. On the edges of the holes, as you see, are a lot of small artifacts. I normally like to smooth them out, but it might not make a big difference. On the other hand, you can use this tool to remove the occlusal area of the crown. This would give you a ring-shaped crown, which does not influence your occlusal area, but gives enough retention for the whole object. Once you're happy with your edited wax, you can just go next until you're in the build step. We click on save for build and you will receive your finished object. Now that the whole object is merged and saved to an STL, we are finished with our snap-on smile design. You have seen that many of the steps are actually optional and you can adapt them to your personal needs. Thanks for watching.